Hi everyone out there. Today we are going to be talking about moissanites. I have basically every shape with me here today. I really like ovals in moissanite form because they really are so brilliant. So generally people come in and they really want to see ovals and when they see oval diamonds, a lot of the time you have a lot more crushed ice in the ovals, but these moissanites are gonna be a lot more brilliant cut. So you're gonna see each facet very cleanly. You can kind of see what I mean just by in this video, you see that facet, you see that kind of, uh, faceting is almost triangular you see those triangles bouncing around within the oval. So our cushions are generally a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning they're gonna be that very classic, very rounded square shape. I'm gonna zoom back in. And once again, you're gonna see these really clean lines. And you're gonna see that light bouncing around. So we have our oval here and our cushion. For those of you asking about size, the cushion is right around two carats. So here we have an emerald. This is an emerald cut moissanite. So we're talking about just moissanites today. And then an asher. Ashers are basically square emeralds. So you're going to see a lot of the same kind of hall of mirrors effects. So a moissanite is a gemstone. It's not a diamond. It's similar to a diamond simulant because it's gonna look a lot like a diamond, but it's not a diamond. So how moissanites are different is they are made up of a totally different element. The reason why moissanites are lab grown is because they don't occur in large quantities on earth. There has been a meteorite that has landed on Earth and that meteorite had moissanites on it. So we like to say that moissanites are from the stars. Essentially, moissanites are grown in a similar way to lab diamonds, in a similar way to lab emeralds. They use essentially like a little baby moissanite seed and they put pressure on it and heat on it to kind of mimic the way it would grow. Um, and through that process, you get a lab created moissanite. So here's that asher again. This is a big asher. And how this would look on my hand would be massive. Love that for me. The difference between a moissanite and a lab-created diamond is that lab-created diamonds are technically diamonds. So there's still a carbon element that has been put high heat and high pressure on and that carbon forms in the same way. But a moissanite, that starting property is not just carbon. Um, it's, you know, a different mix of chemical um, or the sciencey stuff, you know. Uh, <laughs> So the, the, the structural elements, the chemical properties are different. Um, so lab diamond is really just a diamond that's grown in a lab where a moissanite is a different gemstone and can hypothetically be natural in a lab, but really the only ones you're gonna see for sale and in a size that would be okay for a, a ring or jewelry in general is going to be a lab created moissanite. 
Next, we have this radiant. Moissanites are cheaper than lab diamonds. The process to creating a moissanite is going to require less resources and be a little less intensive. So you're gonna have a cheaper price point. So for example, if you wanted to optimize in something like size, a moissanite is going to be a great way to do it. Another thing to kind of talk about with moissanites is how do they look different from diamonds? Because that's a big question. People always want to know if it's going to be a great way to kind of mock a diamond or simulate a diamond for their ring. Moissanites and diamonds do not look identical. So if you're going for a diamond, I recommend going for a diamond. If you love a moissanite instead of a diamond, not as a direct trying to replicate it, then moissanite is a great option. The sparkle is a little bit different. You might be able to see this through the screen if you know diamonds well, or you might, um, you might not, but videos are also really helpful for this in direct comparison, which we do have one of those up. So here's just a round moissanite. What I notice with moissanites after looking, them, looking at them for many years is that their scintillation, their fire, and the dispersion is a little bit different. So on a moissanite, you're going to have a double refraction. This means you're going to have more fire. That, and just more scintillation, but that scintillation comes across differently. So the fire is going to be more of the rainbow sparkle that you see. So the fire is much stronger. Do you see that rainbow color, you guys? So that's the fire. That's because of the double refraction. I find that diamonds, although they, you know, they're gonna have less fire than a moist night, the scintillation is gonna be more of that true white and black flashes. So in a, in a stone, you're gonna have the white light that kind of pops out at you, and you're gonna have the dark light as well passing through each other. Moissanite will have more of that rainbow, a little less of the black and white, and I find that diamond has, you know, more of a equal dispersion of the black and white and the rainbow. So this is a princess cut. So princess cuts have that really strong chevron faceting and those really strong square lines. So here we have a pretty little heart. I think the moissanite comes across really well in a heart shape as it just looks really pretty. Another question people have about moissanites is going to be how durable are they? Moissanites are actually a really great option for a durable stone. On the hardness scale, they're just gonna be under diamond, but they are gonna be above sapphire. So you have kind of that higher point to work with, gonna be much more, um, it's gonna be better for everyday wear is kind of how I would put it, as opposed to um, some other stones that people tend to look at for um, other colorless, you know, white, gemstones, sapphires are a little bit softer. They're not going to have, you know, as much fire, if any fire at all. They might have some, you know, dispersion and scintillation and be sparkly, but not in the same way like a moissanite or a diamond will, and they're not going to be as hard. 
Also, like a white topaz is a simulant. Um, a di well, not necessarily a diamond simulant, you know, but something people get instead of a diamond for that white color. So this pair, beautiful, beautiful pair of stone is about nine by six millimeters. And I'm going to show you that one again on my hand in just one moment. For those of you asking, nine by six millimeters is going to be, I'm looking at my chart because I don't have all of these memorized, despite what you might think. Between 1 and 1 1.5, probably right at about 1.25. And once again, there is no hard 9 millimeters equals 3 carats or whatever because they can hold their weights all a little bit differently. Last but not least, I have the marquee. I love marquees. I think they look really cool sideways because they kind of look like eyes. But I'll hold it this way because that's the way most people get it. That's all I have for us. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Shine bright. Bye.